Four 12-year-old girls say they were strip searched at school and now their families are suing. It allegedly happened in January at East Middle School in Binghamton, New York. According to the lawsuit, the principal thought they were inebriated or seemed that way, so he searched their belongings and took them to the nurse who had them remove some of their clothing to check their vitals, according to the lawsuit. One girl was allegedly given a sobriety test. The girl's parents say they weren't even notified before the search. So I want to bring in HLN legal analyst Joey Jackson to talk about this. And you know, parents saying that they weren't notified before the search and, and told that the girls were acting hyper and giddy, but this lawsuit saying that's not grounds to check vitals, is it? Yeah, that's so true. Lynn, good to be with you. Uh, you know, this is very problematic. Uh, you know, the governor getting involved also in terms of suggesting that uh, this is way out of bounds. And so let's talk about that. The fact is, is that certainly administrators, you want to run a school, you want to make sure other students are safe, you want to make sure if students are unruly that they're brought under control. There is a there is a huge disconnect between that, though, Lynn, and a strip search in the nurse's office, which the argument of the lawsuit is, is not not predicated upon any probable cause. Now, to be clear, without splitting legal hairs is, you know, we look at really the facts of what happened and detained for an hour, you know, the demeaning searches. You need the ability, if you're a school official, you can engage in searches, but you need reason to believe that that's appropriate. According to this lawsuit, there was no reasonable or rational basis to do that whatsoever. What the lawsuit says is that these were students of color, African American and Latino, and by virtue of them being of color, the lawsuit is saying, that they were treated disproportionately and unfairly to these searches that had no basis in fact. They were dehumanizing. They were told to take off and disrobe clothing. They were performed various tests that were unnecessary. The lawsuit alleges that they were intentionally discriminated against. And on that basis, the lawsuit is seeking damages. And so the fact is, Lynn, is that, again, schools have to remain proper order and proper decorum. But to go this far raises serious concerns as to what the school was even thinking in doing this in the first instance. Well, part of the discrepancy here, the school is saying this wasn't a strip search. They just asked the girls to remove bulky clothing for this vitals check. So what can teachers ask children to remove if they are going to do a check? Yeah, well, according to the lawsuit that I'm reading of 41 pages and telling students to take their pants off, that seems like a pretty, uh, you know, a strip search to me. So obviously there are different narratives. Obviously, you know, this is a complaint. A complaint is a legal document which alleges certain facts, and the facts here will have to be contested and ultimately will determine what happened and what didn't happen. But the fact of the matter is, is that, Lynn, you need some reasonable basis to believe that someone is endangered or someone's endangering someone else. Do you you have a weapon? Is there something else that you have for which other students may be subjected to danger as a result of you? And so if you want to have someone remove a jacket to take a look at that, okay. You want to otherwise have a sweater or your coat or something else. But when you start engaging, you know, and, and it goes against the narrative, Len, as I think about this, you're in a nurse's office. So if you're not asking them to disrobe and you're not strip searching them, why are you in a nurse's office? And how does the nurse take vital signs with all their clothes on? So again, uh, you know, facts will have to be vetted out and otherwise determined, mm -hmm. but schools have to be very careful when doing this, particularly given the nature of the ages of the students and, you know, really the, the dehumanizing uh, nature of also telling a student to take this robe. And there are also allegations about comments made about certain body parts. It's just not a good look for the school and I think ultimately needs to be investigated very thoroughly. And when asked for comment on this back in January when the incident came to light, they said that there was no strip search as we just talked about. But this recent lawsuit, they said they cannot comment on pending litigation. If it is proven that these girls were strip searched, strip searched even the governor of New York is saying there should be a criminal investigation into this. Should there be? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. When the governor weighs in on a matter, you know that something's amiss. And you know that there are strong feelings with respect to whether administrators who are the right the adults in the room acted appropriately and so the question becomes that if you're going to have contact with someone's person you need to do it based upon consent and otherwise if they don't consent to you touching them or doing anything else then you know is it proper or is it appropriate that you have that contact and so yeah. you know in
in the event that this criminality or anything else that needs to be vetted out, in the event that the school overstepped, then they should be responsible for civil damages. It is not criminal. That should be determined, too. At this point, allegations. But boy, from what I'm looking at, Lynn, these allegations are severe, significant, and very serious. And we're going to dig deeper into this in our next hour. Joey Jackson, thank you for now. I know you're going to join thank me you. when we are also going to be with the attorney from the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund, who's representing these girls' families in the case. That is at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We've had so many students that have had to endure traumas and violence by the school district. You're asking school children uh, allegedly to strip. I'm pretty sure you got my messages. My daughter's out of school for seven days. Our education. What is going on with that? I apologize to her. It's about time we stand up and we say no more. Not our children, not in our city. Four 12-year-old girls say they were strip searched at school. Now their families are suing. It allegedly happened in January at East Middle School in Binghamton, Binghamton, New York. According to the lawsuit, the principal thought they seemed inebriated, so he searched their belongings, and a nurse had them remove some clothing to check their vitals. One girl was allegedly given a sobriety test. The girl's parents say they were not notified before the search. I want to bring back in HLN legal analyst Joey Jackson on this. Also, one of the lawyers representing the girl's families, Kara McClellan. She is a Skaden Fellow at the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund. So, Kara, I'll start with you. And there's a discrepancy here, what you say and what the school says. So the school's saying flat out there was no strip search and that the girls only had to remove bulky clothing to check their vitals. But we have seen reports, at least one girl said she had to strip down to her underwear. Can you clarify what exactly the girls say happened? Sure. So on January 15th, the girls were walking through the hallway after lunch. They were stopped by the principal and assistant principal who said that um, they had been looking for the girls. And when the girls laughed during the conversation that they were having, they then escorted the girls um, to the nurse's office where they had sobriety tests, where they were subject to demeaning comments, and where they were in some cases strip searched. Um, there were also additional searches of their belongings that occurred. Um, and this is all because the principal later said that he thought the girls appeared hyper and giddy. Um, any parent of a middle school child knows that during lunchtime, students are often hyper and giddy. And this does not rise to reasonable suspicion um, for this kind of demeaning treatment and strip searches. And I know from the complaint, there's also allegations of body shaming as well. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, unfortunately, in addition to looking at the girls, including in some cases um, touching under one girl's bra, um, there were also comments about the girls' bodies, um, about the size of their breasts, um, and also just about observations about their bodies that were said to them. Um, that really, again, at this critical age in their development as adolescents, um, when if you think back to what it's like to be a 12-year-old, you're really starting to develop a self-image. And so to be subjected to this kind of treatment, to be targeted in this way um, for discriminatory reasons, and then to be subjected to these kind of comments about your body and your appearance um, is really something that can have long-lasting damage on an adolescent. So, Joey, obviously the legal issue here, the school's saying back in January there was no strip search. They said now we can't comment on pending litigation. They're also talking a little bit about why they started this in the process of being hyper and giddy. Is that grounds for checking vitals? Do they have a right to do that? Uh, you know, I'm very concerned. Now, obviously, to be clear, uh, this, there's a complaint that's been filed here, right? And the complaint has a number of allegations, and ultimately those allegations will have to be proven in a court of law. And in the event that they're not, that's one thing. In the event that they are, it's quite another. And from the allegations I see, they're very troubling. The question I have at the outset is why? Why did you feel to the school officials it was appropriate, given the tender ages of these, of these girls, to go and do what you did? Was it a pretext? Was it based on, and what that means, Lynn, is, is it nonsense? Meaning, did you have no real lawful reason to do it, but you felt that you wanted to do it based upon the fact that they were African-American and Latino girls? And so the fact is, is that, look, if you're representing a danger to the school, you're representing a danger to others, school officials reasonably believe that perhaps you have a weapon or you're doing something illegal or that's irresponsible, then there's action that should be taken. But from the looks of it, again, it's just allegations to be clear. They'll have to be proven. I'm extraordinary 
extraordinarily troubled by the actions of the adults in the room. Why, why was it necessary for them to go, that is the school officials, to the nurse's office, to have these women disrobe, to engage in de dehumanizing behavior with, with girls who are of tender age, and to do all you did? What was happening on? What, what was happening? Was it based upon them being giddy? Is that what you're suggesting? So there's a lot to be answered for here, and in the event that the answers turn out that this was a pretext, that there was no firm basis, that there was no reasonable suspicion, that it was predicated upon the fact that they were African American and Latino, then I think the school district has some explaining to do and needs to be held accountable. Yeah, and you know, Kara, I know your suit also alleges racism and racial bias, noting that, that the nurse apparently called them loud, disrespectful, and having attitudes. You say um, common stereotypes about black and Latina girls, you know, but I think a lot of people would say, especially teachers, listen, if anyone is loud or disrespectful or has an attitude, they will be told, regardless of the color of their skin, that that's not appropriate for school. Um, I think in this situation, it's clear um, based on the facts of what led to this response that it was extremely excessive. And there's a well-documented body of research um, that talks about how black and Latino girls are more likely to be seen um, as threatening to adults at school, um, less likely to be seen as deserving of nurturing and support. Um, and so when we look at that body of research, in addition to um, statistics within the district that shows that girls of color are more likely to be more harshly disciplined, um, it becomes clear that what was going on was actually um, treatment that was infected by stereotypes about black and Latino girls and more excessive responses than normally would have been given to childlike behavior. And Joey, part of the lawsuit says the problem is the parents weren't contacted before this search. Does a school have to do that in these cases? Well, I think there's a lot of problems. I mean, one thing is, is that it often depends upon what the nature of the emergency is. In the event that your authorities and you're acting upon what we call, right, exigent circumstances, that there's an immediate need, that there's something dangerous, you're not going to take the time and you're not going to call the parents and do that. But from the, pro the problem that I see, Lynn, is I don't see, and again, you know, a complaint is allegations, we'll see what happens in a court of law, but based upon this complaint, where was the emergency? Where was the issue such that thing they represent? And it's such an immediate danger that everyone was in trouble, that they would need to be brought to the nurse's office, strip search, you know, uh, shamed with regard to their bodily integrity. And what was the purpose? What was the basis? So I think you have to look at everything case by case. But absent an emergency, absent a school having to act immediately, then exercise your proper judgment. Call the parents and say, hey, there's something amiss here. This is what we're looking to do. And if it's reasonable, proceed. If it's not reasonable, any parent is going to say, no, you're not. And they're going to show up up and they're going to address the situation. Karen McClellan, Joey Jackson, thank you so much for being with me. We appreciate it. Always. Thank, thank you. you.